What is going on guys, my name is Drakesy and welcome back to a brand new series on this channel. Now I do know FIFA is coming to an end and FIFA 17 is kind of lacking um, what it used to and once had that kind of reputation because new FIFA 18 news is coming out pretty much weekly if not monthly maybe. Um, at the moment. So FIFA 18 is coming out around about September I believe um, but for the time being I want to start a career mode, something that we can enjoy, something that's a bit fresh, a bit new on the channel uh, along with other content going up on the channel and I've decided to pick Newcastle. Now if you're wondering why I've picked Newcastle that is because this year they have actually been promoted up to the Premier League from the Championship along with two other teams, Brighton and uh, the other team is in fact, oh, trying to remember, I think it's Huddersfield. So as we can see, we'll flick across now um, as we're talking. I believe that I've put the other two teams in as well. So as we can see, Brighton are there and then the other team is Huddersfield. So as you can see, the three teams that have been promoted I've actually put into the Premier League. So we're going to start a new career with Newcastle who have just been promoted and hopefully we can do the best with them in the Premier League. So if you do like this idea, get a like down just so I know you're enjoying it and be commenting players that we can be buying for Newcastle to promote them up to the next level. Not only keeping them in the Premier League, but also we're going to be thriving. We're going to be trying getting up to the top spots if we can this year, but if we can't, then we will start into a second uh, series, a second um, a second series, yeah, it's, I think that's correct, yeah, a second series where we go into the next um, the next season with Newcastle and we do as best as we possibly can. So without any further ado, we're going to start this career with Newcastle. So as we can see, it's now loading up. We are going to be the new manager of Newcastle United. So like I did say in the last section, be sure to be getting in your comments down below of players that you want us or think we should be signing in the future episodes. I've got a few in mind at the moment, but we're just going to have to see who we've managed to sign for Newcastle because obviously we've got less of a budget than the other bigger teams, but we have some players that we definitely could be selling. So as we can see, we've had an uh, invitation that invites us to starting in the new tournament as the new manager of Newcastle. I think I'm going to go for the middle one. We are missing out on a bit of money from it, but it is a lesser difficulty. And to be honest, if we can, I do want to be trying to get a bit more money in before we start the season. So as you can see, the objectives set for us by Newcastle are going to be to reach the last 16 of the FA Cup, which I do believe is achievable. Then on top of that, we've got to win the Premier League within four seasons. If we manage to get to four seasons, fingers crossed we do, and it'll be a massive shock if we manage to win it within four, but we'll do our best we can. And then also looking here, we've also got finish mid-table for this season, which is around 13th position, I believe, is that current position. That's telling me my current position. I thought that meant where they want us to finish. It doesn't, but we need to be finishing mid-table, so that's around about 10th. Around about that region, I think it's achievable. We've got to go and get some signings in if we want to do that, though. As we can see, this is the lineup we're going to be starting with. First of all, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to go into this section here where it says scout report, squad report, sorry. I'm actually going to go through all the players and I'm actually either going to list them up on the transfer market, I'm actually going to list them up on the uh, loan market, or if I'm not going to do anything, then I'll just leave them just at the club and do neither. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to see who I think should be leaving the club. So I've gone through all the players so far on the Newcastle list and as we can see we've come to the bottom where there are a few players out on loan already. Quite an interesting one, the one that caught my eye is actually Thuvan or Tuvan, I'm not too sure how you say that. But as we can see he's 81 rated, 23 years old and he's had a fantastic season in real life out at Marseille. I believe he got a team of the season. So he's had a very, very good season over there in France. So he could potentially be somebody that we bring back to the club and just sell on if he has a good season over there. Or potentially a player who could come in for our second season uh, as with Newcastle and uh, do a world of good for us on the right wing. So as I said, guys, I've actually gone through the squad and I've listed up everybody that I think needs to be listed up. Other ones we can't just list up, but we've got a very, very deep and, to be honest, I think a solid squad, but it does need a few additions. So quickly, I just want to check the amount of money that we have. 
Uh, whereabouts do we go to check that? Yeah, finances. So as we can see, we're going to check the finances. And at the moment, we're sitting with 25 million. So be sure to get your comments down below of players that you want to see us sign in. This is very likely to go up in the future indeed when we get some offers coming through for players. So it could even jump up again. But like I said, we want to be looking for players that are good, maybe have a good potential and they're young. Players that we want to be getting a bit of money from in the future, but don't cost too much now because obviously we don't have that much money at the moment. So get your comments down below guys and I'll be checking them out next episode. So the first player I'm going to pick out to have a look at is going to be Marcus Rashford of Manchester United. He's a very, very good young, potentially world-class striker in the future who could do a world of good for our squad. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask our scout to scout him. I'm going to stick him on the shortlist and then I'm going to inquire to Manchester United to ask them how much they think the player is worth. So that's what I'm going to look at first, Marcus Rashford, a fantastic striker who could come into the club very soon. Next up is Kylian Mbappe of Monaco, a very, very good young player indeed, as we will all know. Rumours of him going to Real Madrid. I don't know how much he's worth. I've never bought him on a FIFA career mode before. But what we are going to do is we're going to scout him once again, add to shortlist, and we're going to inquire to Monaco to see how much they value the youngster at as well. The next player we're going to be looking at is a bit different to the other two strikers and that's going to be a goalkeeper. I think a goalkeeper is going to be key for this squad and I've been looking at this guy Alban Lafont, and he looks like he has a fantastic potential in the future as a good young goalkeeper. He's 17 years old and he plays for Toulouse FC, the French, te the French team. He's six foot four, and to be honest, guys, I've heard a lot about him in real life, and I'm sure he's just as good in FIFA. So once again, we're going to scout, add to shortlist, and inquire to Toulouse, and see what they say back to our inquiry. Next up is from Man City, Kelichi Iheanacho of Nigeria, and as we can see, this guy is 19 years old. He's six foot two. He's a very, very prominent striker. Uh, for Nigeria I believe but not so much Man City he's out of favour but as we can see looking at those stats on the right hand side of that profile he looks fantastic overall if those stats are anything to go by so once again an exciting prospect and somebody who could come to the squad and do a world of good for our team so I'm going to go ahead and scout uh, add on to the shortlist and inquire to Man City again and to be honest guys this guy could be a little bit cheaper than the other two but maybe he's not as good in the future. Now, some of you might not know who this guy is, but he's called Malang Sar, and I've heard quite a bit about him in FIFA once again. He's also very, very good in real life for Nice this year. I believe he's had quite a good season uh, in the games that he has played, but once again, he's very, very young. He's 17 years old, a centre-back. He's six foot tall. We could get him on the cheap, guys. I believe he starts out as a high 70 rated, um, but I don't know what he goes up to, but once again, he's an exciting prospect. So once again, we're going to do the usual scope, add to shortlist and inquire as well and see where we go from there with the youngster Mal Ang Sar. And the last player that we're going to be looking at is the left midfielder from Chelsea, Charlie Masonda, who is 19 years old. He's pretty small, standing at 5 foot 8, but he looks like a fantastic talent again. So once again, this is going to be the last guy we're looking at. We're going to do all the usual and we're going to see where we stand after that. But be sure to get your comments in because maybe I've missed out on some potentially good players that you know about that I'm not too sure or aware of at the moment. So as we can see, we're doing a bit of training at the moment. And as you can see, the first training regime is going to be with Mitrovic doing the El Rondo. I am going to simulate these, but I just wanted to let you know, you may be wondering why I'm doing defensive work with uh, Mitrovic, but it's because he's so close to levelling up. Uh, if he does somewhat good on the defensive ones, it will boost up his stats and potentially get him up to a 76 rated striker. So we're going to simulate and see if my idea worked. Maybe it didn't. Bam. So as we can see, he has gone up in ratings, but he's not managed to go up to a 76 just yet. But as well, Perez and Sells, the goalkeeper, also got some training as well. So as we can see, we've had some inquiry offers back. Um, the centre-back Saar from Nice, he's apparently not going to be leaving the club. They've just recently bought him and they're not too happy about selling him. 
then I'll ban the cent the sorry not centre back the goalkeeper uh, Alban Lafont. He's actually in the region of 13 million, which is quite pricey for a young goalkeeper, but somebody that we can afford and potentially bring in if we want to. And then on top of that, we've got Kylian Mbappe, one of the best youngsters in the world right now, but he is 25 million. We can afford him, but we would have no money left to buy anybody else. We've skipped a little bit further in as well, and as we can see, Charlie Masonda, he's come back, well, not him personally, but Chelsea have come back with an inquiry or an offer of 10 million. That is particularly cheap for the youngster. We do know he kind of levels up somewhat well in career mode. I have bought him before for other career modes. So he could be a potential signing that we could snap up for particularly cheap as well. Uh, then we've got Ian Nacho for 11 million. So if we were to buy Charlie Masonda and Ian Nacho, we would still have a bit of money left and it would only cost us 23 million, leaving us with about 3 million in the bank and then more players to sell in future. And then on top of that, we've got Marcus Rashford for about 21 million. So once again, quite a pricey player right there. But I'm going to hold on to these guys. I'm not going to delete these. I'm actually going to archive them just for now because I want to hold on to them. Because if we do want to go back and buy the player, we kind of know how much they're worth. So we're going to archive these messages. Um, we're going to delete that one because obviously that centre back is not up for leaving. But yeah, so now when we check messages, archived. Uh, we've got five messages waiting for us if we do go back for these in episode two. So we've got our match in the first pre-season tournament games and as we can see this is the lineup we're going for. I've actually changed the formation a bit around so as we can see at the moment for these pre-season matches I'm going to run with a 4-4-1-1 formation. If you want me to try out some new formations with Newcastle be sure to get that down in the comment section below and I'll try and use them. But we're going to be lining up with a pretty strong team. Uh, overall, one of the strongest teams we could somewhat field. Uh, the only out of position kind of player right here at the moment is probably Atsu, who can and does usually play right mid. But for now, we're going to play him in left mid and see how he gets on. And um, yeah, we're going to get into the match and see how we do. We are going to simulate it. So we're getting into the simulation. And as we can see, the team that we're coming up against is actually Empoli. Empoli, I'm not too sure how you would say that. I believe they are a second division Italian team and uh, without any further ado, we're already simulating. Nothing so far, we're coming up to the 27th, 29th minute still. Nothing going on, nothing to document. Callbacks picked up an injury, not the best news right there. Doesn't look like a serious one. Um, we've done two substitutions, they've done one. Another player picks up a card for them. That's all sim That's all of our... Oh, Diame! Diame getting an 86th minute goal. Pretty much in the last minutes of the game, our substitution Diame from the bench coming on and managing to get us a goal. Who did he come, for come on for? He came on for Jack Colback, the guy who got injured. So, potentially Diame could step in for Colback now that Colback's picked up an injury. We'll have to see how serious that injury is now. So as we can see, Jack Colback is going to be out for six weeks. That's the last thing we need, a six-week injury just before we start in the Premier League. So guys, it's looking like we will be needing some shoring up in the centre-mid positions. A centre-defensive mid or a centre-mid player would be perfect. So um, be sure to get those suggestions of centre-mids that we could use uh, in this career mode so far. We got a bit more training here. We're going to be training up the goalkeeper and Mitrovic again. Fingers crossed Mitrovic goes up. He got three Ds. He doesn't look like he's going up in rating, but some of his stats in defending have gone up. Um, and not a bad performance from our goalkeeper either there as well. So as we can see, this is the lineup we're going for for our next match. I think it's against, is it SC or FC Braga, the Portuguese team? We'll see in a minute. But as we can see, I've changed up quite a few positions. I've actually put Matt Ritchie, the right mid, in at centre attacking mid because I do believe he's okay playing there. He was suggested to play there, so I've popped him in and see how he does. We've also got Gufran, or uh, I think it's Johan Gufran, or Johan Gufran. I'm not too sure how you say his name. All I know is he's French. Um, Diame, who came in for callback and got a goal, he's also going to get a game. And then also Amiobi is going to get a game as well, as well as a new defence as well. So fingers crossed all that goes well and we're going to get into the match now. So once again, simulating the game, we're running the same 4-4-1-1 formation. And I was right in saying it was SC Braga. Already nine minutes in, Diame, the guy who scored our goal, 
has got a red card. But as I was saying, uh, it is SC Braga who we are playing. Uh, one of their players, Pinto, has actually got an injury that he has to come off for. Um, and sadly, damn it, they've scored against us. That's what happens when you go down to 10 men, guys. We're coming into the 70th, 80th minute. Still 1-0 down. Looks like that's how the game's going to end, and it has. So we won our first game, sadly lost our second. Uh, not a very good game overall for either team. One of their players getting injured and us getting a red card, but they did come away with the victory. Okay guys, so we've actually had some transfer offers for a few players come in. As we can see, Watford Premier League rivals now that Newcastle are up in the Premier League. Um, ooh, now this is interesting. I think I might want to jack up the price a bit. Potentially going to say around... Should we say seven and a half million? Literally because they are a Premier League rival. I, th I still think that's not enough. I feel like Watford could accept that. Let's say nine and a half million. If they give us nine and a half million, that is definitely, definitely worth it for the player. I have a feeling they're going to reject it, but I don't really want to lose the player either. We've actually had a transfer um, loan offer from Burnley for Carl Darlow. And to be honest, I don't think he's going to get any Premier League playing time or any game time for Burnley, that is. So I think I'm going to reject this one because I feel like there is a club out there for him, but Burnley aren't right. And then as we can see, Gufran or Gufron, I'm not too sure how you would say Gufran. I'm not too sure I'm not French. Uh, but as you can see, the French team, Nates, have actually come in for him. And they've offered around about his value, just a bit under. But we're going to see if we can get a bit more from him. Um, and a bit more from the team that is as well. Should I offer? I'm going to say 4 million. Maybe they'll come back with a counter offer. Maybe they'll just reject it completely. He is 30 years old. Yeah, actually thinking he's 30 years old. I doubt they're going to spend 4 million on him. Let's say, let's say 1 million more than his value and see what they say back to that. We've actually had another transfer offer here from Ipswich for Rolando Ahrens. He's a good youngster, he's quite quick, he's talented, but is he going to be getting game time? I'm not too sure. I think I'm going to stall this one for now, but he could potentially be on his way to Ipswich. I'm just going to hold on to it for now though. Isaac Hayden has actually had a transfer loan request, should I say, for MK Dons. I think I'm going to send him there. I feel like he'll get a bit of game time. He's 21 years old. He could be a player for the future for us, but for now, he's probably not going to get that much game time. As we can see for our next match coming up, Curtis Good, the uh, Australian centre-back, I think. I think he's about a 64 rated, so if he was in Ultimate Team, he would in fact be a bronze. But he's actually asked me for a chance to play. I think I'm going to give him the chance to play, because to be honest, he's probably not going to get much pr uh, Premier League playing time, that is, so... Yeah, I'll give him a game this game just to see how he gets on. So this is the lineup we're going for against CSK Moscow. And as we can see, it's a strong lineup once again. The only weak point is kind of Curtis Good, the centre back who has to play. He's um he's not the best, he's 64 rated, but we're gonna make him the captain and hopefully that spurs our team on to potentially saying to them all, anybody can get a chance. Look how bad this guy is, and he's he's even getting the chance and the captain's arm badge. Either that or they're all going to fall out with us because he does not deserve it, but we'll have to see after the match. So we're getting into the match now. We're going to be simulating and we're going to be seeing how we get on. It's quite interesting. They have a very, very good squad indeed, CSK Moscow. So I wouldn't be shocked if we come out with a draw and potentially a loss. But look at that, 25 minutes in and Iosi Perez, the centre attacking mid for the team, managed to get a goal. Iosi Perez getting a second in the 45th minute. We've done our substitutions, Mitrovic, uh, Mitrovic has come on for Gale, but look at that, it's actually a hat-trick for Iosi Perez, he's having the game of his life guys, and that's full time, Iosi Perez getting the hat-trick, that's what we need, we need standout players like him putting in a fantastic performance, and to be honest, Curtis Good, the little cruddy centre-back that was, has not even let in a goal, so he's not been too bad for us either. As we can see, the transfer offer that came in for Gufran was too much and uh, the French team Nates have pulled out of that potential offer. 
Watford have in fact reviewed our price tag that we set for Iolzi Perez and they've actually said that was too much. I don't know what those guys are talking about because he's just had the game of his life getting a hat-trick which surely should add some value onto the player. Tournament prize money, we've been awarded an extra 1 million which is going to be fantastic getting in some extra signings. So I think I might be leaving it there guys. I think I'm going to hold on to this Rolando Aaron's offer. As you can see, Curtis Good is coming in. He's saying thank you very much for the offer. No problem anytime. But as I said guys, I think that's where I'm going to leave today's episode. Be sure to be getting in the transfer offers and requests that you want to be seeing coming to Newcastle. We need some centre mid, specifically centre defensive mid. So get those down below and uh, yeah, we'll be checking those out next episode. But thank you very much. This has been episode one of the Newcastle in the Premier League uh, career mode and I hope you guys have enjoyed. See you in a bit guys.